story time is so funny you guys i completely forgot about this until i looked through my old snapchat memories and an old video came up of this day so as some of you guys may know i used to work at six flags when i was in high school it was a terrible experience but that's not what this video is about this video is about one of the perks that i got working at six flags so I was allowed to bring one person and myself for free to Six Flags on any of my days off. So I was best friends with this one girl, and every chance that we got, we would go to Six Flags. The only thing was that this friend of mine hated roller coasters. She was completely terrified of them, so we never went on them. Until one day, I convinced her. Don't ask me how I did it because I have no idea. I'm a very persuasive person, so I was just like pushing, 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 and I just like basically didn't let her say no. Not gonna lie, it's one of my toxic traits, but we'll talk about that another time. So anyway, there's a roller coaster ride, it's called El Toro. And it doesn't go upside down or anything, and that was one of the main things my friend said is that she does not want to go upside down. But this ride is still a pretty intense ride, it's the fastest ride at Six Flags, other than King Naka. So I take her on El Toro, right? So she's obviously super nervous. So the first drop, she's screaming, I'm screaming. Then I feel all her body weight on me, so I'm laughing, but I look over to her, and she went limp, like as if she fell asleep. Then we go up again, she starts screaming. We go down again, she goes limp, over and over and over. So imagine you are having severe back pain and you decide to put your trust in a doctor. He's a new doctor, he's confident, says that he's never made any mistakes before and claims that he can take your pain away. So you agree to have surgery. It seems that everyone around this doctor really likes him. So you agree in hopes that the surgery is going to provide some sort of relief. However, you wake up after surgery and you've lost the ability to move your legs. Was the spinal cord injury just a medical mishap or did this doctor intentionally try to kill you? Well, Dr. Christopher Daniel Dunch, a former neurosurgeon working in Dallas, ended up getting the nickname of Dr. Death. 33 out of 38 of his patients were seriously injured and two were killed. His reputation was so dangerous that they are literally about to come out with a TV series based on how terrifying his true story is, which you guys should definitely go watch on Peacock. But how exactly did this man get here? Well, Christopher Dunch was born in Montana on April 3rd of 1971. He graduated from a small Christian college and then decided that he'd go to medical school in Memphis. Part two of Dr. Death. So Christopher Dunch had such a promising beginning. He ended up getting into the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. And during his time there, he ran labs, raised millions of dollars in grant funding. He was listed as one of three inventors on a successful patent. And he also gave a stem cell research tour to the governor of Tennessee. And while this seems amazing, there was already some issues. He ended up giving himself more credit than what was due for those patents, as opposed to his partners who were trying to create cells from culture to eliminate the need for human extraction. Also later on on his resume, he ended up saying that he graduated from St. Jude's Children's Hospital, getting a doctorate in microbiology whenever they said they didn't even have that program at that time. But it didn't take him long to set his sights on neurosurgery. Because of how hard being a neurosurgeon is, you're required to participate in around a thousand surgeries during your residency. But during his fourth year, he was sent to an impaired physician's program, which usually happens when you're suspected of being under the influence during operation. And this occurred during his fourth year. After graduating, he worked with some biotech startups and then moved to Dallas, got a job at Baylor and started to operate. Part three to Dr. Death. The way that the other surgeons describe him there is being very much arrogant. He would talk about how amazing he was, even though he was so new to the field. And several of his surgeries ended up botched. A medical investigator came to see him as a patient. And after his surgery, he experienced chronic pain and limited mobility. Another male patient came to see him and was literally left with bone fragments in his spinal canal, eventually losing all function in his left side. And not to mention one of his best friends, Jerry Summers, came to see him for a surgery because he had chronic pain due to a car accident, which ended up rendering him quadriplegic. So the people at Baylor limited him to minor surgeries only. And then a mom of two girls came to see him for a routine surgery in which she lost so much blood that she lost her life. And during the operation, Dr. Dunst ignored that anything was going wrong. He just continued the surgery. So Baylor was absolutely done with him and kicked him out. So he moved on to Dallas Medical Center. He ended up getting temporary privileges until they received his records from Baylor. This was a huge mistake. Dr. Death Part 4. So at this new surgery center, he literally lasted for less than a week. His privileges were pulled after he killed yet another patient and paralyzed another. And this is when Dr. Henderson steps in. He's a longtime spine surgeon, and he ends up having to do corrective surgery on two of Dunch's patients. And he's literally so horrified with his work that he thinks he's an imposter. So he faxed a photo of the doctor over to the University of Tennessee just to check. And it really started to seem like he knew what not to do and was doing it on purpose. Anyone with a basic anatomy class would have done better. Since he was only temporary, the hospital was not required to report him. And Dr. Dunch ended up getting two more jobs after this and severely hurting more people. 
One was left temporarily paralyzed, but with permanent pain. And the other one, he mistook a neck muscle for a tumor and cut a hole in his esophagus and left a surgical sponge in his throat. And the surgeon that came in to pick up the pieces afterwards referred to Dr. Duff as a crazed maniac and even said that it was clear that he was trying to kill his patient. It was obvious Texas was going to have to find a way to remove his license. Dr. Duff, part five. So after a lot of investigating, Texas Medical Board revoked his license. And this happened on December 6th of 2013. And his life was just in disarray after this. He went bankrupt. It was literally caught on the Walmart camera stealing merchandise and was arrested. There was still a possibility that he could get a medical license somewhere else. So they had to pursue criminal charges. They opened up an investigation, got him arrested and started a trial. And during this trial, a lot of things came out. There was clear dangerous behavior between him and one of his long-term ex-girlfriends and also another side piece of his. And one of his most damning pieces of evidence was an email of his that he was writing to a lover, comparing himself to Einstein and God, and basically stating that he was ready to leave kindness and goodness behind and become a cold-blooded killer. He ended up getting sentenced to prison, but there was a lot of other stuff that came out during this trial. And I also left out so many details throughout this whole story. You guys will have to watch the show on Peacock. They do such a great job of capturing just how scary this doctor is. Somebody chose violence. Let's talk about this. All right. All right. It is a well-known fact among my followers that I don't wear makeup in none of my videos. And this person doesn't follow me, so of course they don't know that. So I responded to their comment and said, what, huh? What do you mean? And they go, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> For information, I do not wear makeup. And then I clarify by saying, even if I did, I'm pretty sure that would make me look older, not younger. Because that's what I've been told, that it's because I don't wear makeup that that's why I look very young. That may be one of the reasons, aside from genetics. I was already like, mm. This guy responds, ooh, you're quite rare. I like. Get out! I've said this before, but I'm actually used a lot in makeup videos because of the sounds that I make. A lot of my story times are used in the beauty community, and I love that. Although I don't use any makeup, I feel like I'm a part of the beauty community just because my sounds get used a lot. You don't get to put down people who use makeup. It's a skill. You're not less than if you use makeup. It's art. And there are plenty of dudes who want to use makeup but feel like they can't because of people like you and because it's just not marketed towards them. At least in this country. That's, that's not the point. The point is you made an assumption. You were wrong. And you managed to bring down everybody who wears makeup at the same time. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. This is why you should never eat food from public schools. Every day at school, I would eat breakfast and lunch from school. I really looked forward to our school lunches. I thought my school's meals was better than my mom's cooking. Okay, so one day I was trying to gain extra credit at school and we had this program where we can help out with activities at school to earn extra points toward your grades. So I decided to help out in the cafeteria. So my duties would be to help prepare food and clean up the cooking area. My first day preparing food went great. I stayed later to help clean the cooking area and as I was putting food away, I noticed there were roaches in the pantry where all the food were stored. I also seen rat traps on the floor and all the corners of the walls. So from that moment, I was totally grossed out. I now no longer eat meals from the school. I carry my lunch every day now.